Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be walking you through a project on how to build a dry creek bed and also how to estimate a complicated drainage project. I'm also gonna give you a great formula that you can use to calculate exactly how many tons of river rock you're going to need in your dry creek bed project. But before we get started, make sure if you like these videos to please subscribe to the channel, that helps us out a lot. Make sure to hit the like button and tap the bell for notifications so you get updated every time a new video comes out. So let's get started. Where we started on this project is we have a culvert at the very front end coming off of the city street. And in this culvert, two pipes enter. We get one that is from a storm drain on the street. That's an 18 inch pipe. We get a second one that's a 24 inch pipe that comes from retention areas on properties that you can't see but lie off into the distance. Now the problem that this homeowner had, it's a brand new homeowner, the home, homeowner purchased this home as an investment property. And one of the immediate things that came up was a drainage problem. What they had here was this culvert where these two pipes enter, a 12 inch pipe. So I want you to imagine this area right here. Let me get down in here so you can see it closer. Okay, there's our 24 inch pipe. That pipe goes up the hill, across the street to businesses and neighborhoods that are where their stormwater retention eventually makes its way down here. This pipe right here, which is an 18 inch pipe, goes right up here to the street and serves as a storm drain. So a lot of water comes down through there. Originally, somebody had built in a little boxed area right in this area and stuck a 12 inch corrugated pipe down here. And that 12 inch pipe was intended to serve, and you gotta imagine, one 24 inch pipe at full, full blown plus one 18 inch pipe down to a 12 inch pipe doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So of course, this system would always get backed up it would flood the yard. And in addition to that, downstream of that 12 inch pipe, all of the gutters were, at least on the front and on the right side of the house, were piped into the system as well. And where they were piped in, they put a drain grate in the yard. And that's something, here's tip number one, never put a drain grate in a yard and in, that's designed to be what you would think is an inlet drain, upstream or downstream of downspouts or heavily heavily flowing waters. I'm going to try to do it like this so you can see downstream of these waters because what's going to happen when you put that drain grate in is it actually serve as an outlet not an inlet because when you take water from a higher gravity position and rush it down and you decide oh I'm going to put a drain grate right in the middle of my system because that's where groundwater will actually funnel to. It's not. The opposite's going to happen. The water's going to take the path of least resistance and actually fly out and geyser out of your drain grate and I learned that lesson the hard way because I did it so now we don't do that so what we've done if the homeowner contact, contacted the county said here's my problem here's my issue what can I do to correct it if the homeowner wanted to continue with a piping system he would have to go in with a system capable enough to handle both the load of the 24 and the 18 inch that would require a 48 inch pipe it's a four foot diameter pipe the only acceptable alternative is to put in a dry creek bed. So that's what we decided to do because it's a much less cost. So we've put in this dry creek bed and one of the goals was function. How does it make it work correctly and retain the water until it's limiting choke point, which I'll show you here in just a moment. The other function is aesthetic. So if you can see, we created a really nice organic curve with it. The path of least resistance would have been just go straight diagonally right, right through that point but the homeowner wanted it to look nice as well as function. So we did, we created it over there. Um, let me show you this. Here are some of the inlet pipes coming from downspouts. So this four inch corrugated pipe attaches to those two downspouts. We have another four inch corrugated pipe over here, right there. That is connecting to the front yard drainage systems. We've done the same on the left side of the house. So we're basically looked at this project and said, every knowable source of water from your roof to collection boxes in the front yard to the inlets coming off the street, we want to identify and bring through this creek system. Now it does have one choke point and that is under this driveway. How do you get under this driveway? We're limited by what we're able, what is already here. What was here was this 18 inch pipe. We've just stuck this up here temporarily. But behind there is a steel 18 inch pipe. 
Now, in that 18 inch pipe, they shoved the 12 inch corrugated pipe. Let me show you our corrugated pipe cemetery over here. Here it is. This is all the corrugated pipe we pulled out of the system. So they basically took that 18 inch in drain pipe under the driveway and this just happened to be convenient enough to slide in. So this was trying to carry the load. You can see there's a whole bunch of silt and sediment built up in these ridges um, just over time. So what we've done is we've opened all this up. This water will flow freely now and will allow for plenty of holding capacity if for some reason this 18, because remember, mathematically this 18 inch is undersized. It's mathematically by the, by the codes, by the guidelines, it should be a 48 inch pipe, but it can't. It's under a driveway. I mean, we're not ripping up the driveway. That wasn't part of the scope of the work. So in order to, if this thing ever flowed at full capacity, it would need some room to back up until the rain stopped and allowed this water to go, or the rain slowed down, allow the water to flow through. Hence the purpose of this big dry creek bed. Not only does it bring water in, it also allows for additional holding capacity. So then we get to this side, and on this side, they've got this really nice arbor uh, pea gravel area, and we were gonna, so we didn't have to tear this up, we dug all this out. We temporarily, temporarily relocated this arbor, relocated the pavers, shoveled back all the pea gravel, dug down about four, almost five feet, and we connected in a brand new 18 inch pipe. Two sections, a 20 foot section and a 10 foot section for a total of 30 feet long, just so we could save this area and have some sort of recreational area and not have it a dry creek. So here's the discharge point of that. This is that 18 inch pipe right here. Right there's the 18 inch top of it. Water discharges here and goes down the rest of, hang on, falling all over the place. The rest of the dry creek bed area, all the way downstream. So to that, we wanna tap in the parts of the system that the water that's gonna come off the driveway, we, we put in this little side channel right here to address, to capture and collect that water. We've got a couple more pipes coming in, at least one more that I know of, right here. Here's another pipe coming in from downspouts on this side of the house. So we finally get to that magic number. And the magic number is this. When I estimate and look at dry creek beds, it's always somewhat of a guess to say, how much material do I need for this job? Is it 10 tons, 12 tons? And so I did a little bit of math on this project and it comes out to be one ton of material for every eight feet. So if you measure your dry creek bed, now I know there's variances on width, there's variances on depth, you start to look at ours, and it, I've com compensated a little bit. That's not the actual number we used, is actually a little bit higher because of how deep this one goes and how much rock there is. So I'm making that, use the number I'm telling you, that's not the number for this job because in an average dry creek, it usually will not need to be swaled nearly to this extent. It might be narrower, it might be wider. You'll have to add or subtract to that number as necessary. But if you're estimating a job and you're looking and saying, okay, I need 100 feet of dry creek bed, you can pretty much count on that to be a very accurate, close representation to say one ton of decorative, medium to large size Tennessee river boulders in bulk quantity. We bought them, we didn't buy this palletized, a lot of times we do, but we bought this in bulk because we want to save money on this job. Um, we, one ton for every eight feet of length that you have. So with that formula, I'll leave you with that. And uh, just know that these are, this project specifically had a certain degree of complexity more because it had this pipe going under the driveway we had that pea gravel area that we had to make sure to keep clean and keep neat. I mean, that looks exactly like how it looked when we showed up on this project but if you knew or if you saw what this was like under construction this was just a mountain of dirt so all underneath here is piping excavation just a ton of work so you might be wondering, how long did this job take? This job, we are at the end of day two and a half. We kind of scoped it out a little bit early on Wednesday. So at the end of the day, Friday, we're at 95% done. There's a few items we're gonna have to come back for tomorrow. Like, see that fence? Over the years, the fence is leaning, so the homeowner asked us if we could straighten up the fence. So we're gonna do that for him because 
when they had drainage problems, it pushed all the silt and the sediment up against the fence and made it lean. So we're going to fix that. Um, we're going to fix that. Probably have to come back tomorrow to fix that. But really, overall, this is a three-day job. Um, three-day job with two guys doing the job. Two guys, I'm sorry, and I did subcontract the excavation work. So I had my uh, friend come out with his excavator. He worked for about six to seven hours yesterday on doing just the major portion of the clean out. And you think, you might be thinking like, why did you hire somebody to do the excavation? Because it's cheap and it's easy. I mean, and this guy is like an artist with his excavator. I don't want to go through the learning curve of that. I only have to use him maybe once or twice a quarter. So I bring him in for six or seven hours and he clears all of that out for us. We were able to redistribute the dirt. Uh, Eduardo, my foreman, actually had to leave the job for several hours because he had to go purchase the pipe, the, the 20 foot and the 10 foot section of 18 inch pipe and hook it up to the trailer. So for quite a while, there was one person here on the job. So from a labor hour standpoint, if you figure in just roughly a 10 hour day times two guys times three days, uh, that's 20 times three, that's what, 60 labor hours? Um, you know, I would say that's pretty good for a job like this. I think we completed it faster than most people would. Um, again, though, one of the blessings is the fact that uh, I have Eduardo and the fact that he, there's no need to stop out here and babysit and to watch. I mean, there's things I check in on, but for the most part, everything gets done very, very smoothly. So many blessings with for my crew and for the people and for the guys that are out there working hard, all of the guys, all of the crews that do that. Um, so that ends and that concludes our Dry Creek video. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more stuff coming. Uh, hit the like button and uh, tap the notification bell. My kids have to remind me of that. Thanks. Have a great day.